Hi, in this video, we're going to introduce array lists. So let's talk about some limitations of arrays. Um, as your programs get complex, you'll run into some limitations. First, arrays are a fixed size. What if you need more space in the list? And arrays only provide low level get and set access. What if you want to do more? Introducing array lists. Array list is like an array with extra powers. It can automatically reside and also comes with other helpful methods. So let's first go over creating an array list. The first thing is you'll need to import it. Uh, it's in the java.util package. You, we can usually import it with java.util.star, which imports all those classes, or you could do java.util.arraylist. And then let's say we want to create an empty array list of strings. We say array list, open bracket, string, close bracket, list equals new array list, open bracket, string, close bracket, open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. So you'll notice something new, which is that these array lists, you need to write the type, you need to write the type that it's templatized over in between the angle brackets. And so if we want to make an array list to store integers, we say array list of integers, uh, where integer is the, the templatized type. So you can actually store a primitive type here. So for ints, you use capital integer, for doubles, you use capital double, um, behind the scenes, what's happening is Java is handling the conversion between the object and the primitive, which is called um, unboxing and, and autoboxing. But um, we won't dive into that right right now. Let's see how we add to an array list. So we, we'll make an array list of integers called list, and then we'll say list.add. Uh, we'll add 5, we'll add 3, we'll add 10, we'll add 4, and you can see what that resulting list will look like below. So there's an add method that lets you append uh, an element to the end of your list. If you'd like to get a value in an array list, there's a get method, uh, which gets a value at that index. So if we want to say int val equals list dot get of one, uh, get one. So you can see that index one is value three. If you'd like to set a value in an array list, uh, there is a set method where you can set at a specific index to a specific value. So we'll say list.set at index 2 to 88. So you can see we've now changed the value at index 2. If you'd like to get the length or size of an array list, you can use the list.size method. So size is a method, and you'll, you'll want to note an important difference here is that size is the number of elements in the array list. With arrays, arrays had a fixed length. Um, there could, you know, not all the elements in the array were necessarily full, and so there is a slight distinction between the length of an array, which is its fixed size, and the size of an array list, which is how many elements it has. Let's say we want to loop over an array list of integers called list. We can say for int i is zero, i is less than list dot size, i plus plus, and then say int elem equals list dot get at i, and then we can use element. So that's more of our standard processing for loop, very similar to the one we had with arrays. But there's also a special uh, for each loop, uh, which you can use when you're iterating over different collections and different data structures. Uh, so we have, let's say, that same array list of integers called list. We can say for int elem colon list, and then use elem within the loop. And so what's going on here is that uh, on the right is the name of our data structure, so our name of our array list called list, and it's saying go through every element of the list and basically assign that um, element to a variable called elem. So it's doing the exact same thing but provides a different uh, syntax for, for using it. So if you have an array list of strings, you could say for string elem in list. So let's go over a quick reference of some of the key array list methods. So first is the size method, which returns an int, which is the number of elements in the list. Uh, there's an add method, which takes the parameter e elem, and it adds element element to the end of the list. And so the reason it says capital E elem is because that parameter is over a templatized type because e can be any type. So in some examples, a string, could be an integer, could be one of your custom objects, but the name of it in here is called elem, and the type is e, so it can be any type. And then e get int index 
return the element at index index. And so what's going on here is you pass in an int value for the index, and then it returns uh, the element of type E, whatever the type is of the array list. Similarly, there is a method to remove at an index, and so it removes the value, but then shifts other values beyond it. So it's different than getting it. And then void add int index E element. So that's gonna insert elm at that specific index and shift values after it. So it's important to know that the ArrayList class implements the list interface. This means you could use it like this. You could, there could be other list implementations, but we'll just focus on ArrayList. So remember when you implement an interface on the left hand side of the expression, you can write the name of that interface. So it's a list of strings called myList. And when you actually instantiate it, when you create it, you can say it's equal to a new array list of strings. So there are other lists, um, there are other implementations uh, of classes implementing the list interface. Here we'll just focus on uh, array list for now. So let's explore this more in our editor. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is make an array list of strings. So say array list of strings called my list equals new array list of strings open close parentheses semicolon. So there's a lot going on there in terms of syntax. Don't forget the open angle bracket, close angle bracket, as well as the open close parentheses uh, because we're making a new object. Now we'll say my list dot add. We'll add hello. And then we'll also add world. Um, and then we'll go and print out the values in that list. So we'll say my list dot get at zero and we'll print line at my list dot get of one. So let's run that. And there you go. That's just a simple example of adding to and getting from an array list. Okay, so here we'll show an example of using array lists um, with primitive types. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make an array list of integers. It's called my list. It's a new array list of integers. So what we're gonna do is we'll say my list dot add, we'll add 100 to the list, and then we'll say my list dot add 200. So even though these are ints that we're passing in primitive types, this Java will handle behind the scenes making sure that uh, they're actually stored properly as integer objects because array lists only take objects. Then when we want to print those out, we can say system.out.println my list.get of zero. And we'll try printing out my list.get of one. So we'll run that. And there you go, you can see that um, it prints out the right values. If we said it was an array list just over int, and we try to run that, um, you'll see that we're gonna get an error. Um, that's, that's not basically a valid type that we can use for our array list. Okay, next up what we'll do is we'll try writing a program that shows how we can use the size method of array lists. So what we'll do is we'll make an array list of integers called numbers. And we'll say it's a new array list of integers. Okay, and then next what we'll do is we'll add 100 numbers to that list. So we'll say for int i equals zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus. Uh, we'll say numbers dot add i. And then we'll print out the size of the list. So we'll say system.println numbers.size. And you can see when we run this, we have 100 elements in our list. And if we change this to, you know, 400, we can see the same, that it prints out the right uh, number of elements in our list. In this example, we have uh, some, something else slightly more complicated. Uh, we have a program that that simulates a reading list. And so for us, a reading list is an array list of strings. So we make our array list of strings called reading list. And then we'll add some books to that reading list. We'll add The Great Gatsby, we'll add The Catcher in the Rye, we'll add Animal Farm and Tom Sawyer. And then we call our helper method print array list. So we can look at print array list. 
So what print array list does is it takes an array list of strings called list, prints out a reading list, and then using our for each loop, uh, prints out the book in the reading list. And then it prints out a separator. So, and then we decide we want to read Lord of the Flies first. So we're using a different add method, which inserts it at position zero and shifts everything else down. Then we'll print our list. Uh, then we decide that Walden should actually be third. So we add at index two Walden. Then we decide we don't want to read Animal Farm. So we remove it from the list. We also want to remove the second book. We can remove something at an index. And then we can see how many books we have in our reading list. Uh, next up, we can get the first book using our get method and find out what index is Tom Sawyer in our list. So this is a handy, uh, a handy method that actually searches for this, for this element. So we'll run this program and we can see what the output is. So you can see we add our first four books and that's our reading list. Um, then we add Lord of the Flies, you can see it's first. Uh, then we add Walden, you can see it's third. Then we remove Animal Farm, you see it's no longer in the list. Then we remove uh, Index 1, you see Great Gatsby is no longer there. We have four books, the first book is Lord of the Flies, and Tom Sawyer is at Index 3. So there you go, that's an example of uh, using ArrayList in a little more complicated way. And now we'll take a look at an example that uses ArrayList as an instance variable. So here we have a program that simulates a cell phone. So we have a cell phone object, we make a new cell phone, then we create uh, several new text messages and add the text messages to the phone. And then at the end we say for every text message in the phone's text messages printed out. So let's go look at some of those classes. So the text message class is pretty simple. Uh, a text message has a message, a sender, and a receiver, and those values are initialized in our constructor. So from, to, and the message. Then we have a to string that shows the message that was sent. And in our cell phone class, uh, a cell phone, what a cell phone has is it has an array list of text messages called texts. So the reason it's an array list, not an array, is that number you know might change and so it's not a fixed size so in our constructor we'll initialize our array list of text messages and then in this public method add text all we do is we add that text message to our list of texts and then we have a getter method um, which is called get text messages that just returns that array list of text messages to be used so if we go back to our tester and then uh, go and run the code you'll see that we'll print out all the text messages in our phone. So that's an example, uh, and these are several examples of using ArrayLists.